Due to mature subject matter, viewer discretion is advised. A two-on-one assault leaves an inmate bloodied and injured. Who had the thing that cut it back of his head open? But getting to the bottom of this fight requires some digging. I saw you swinging at him. You both had him cornered. You want to stand there and lie to me some more? You know, you sort of get that, is that him? No, it's not him. Is that him? No, it's not him. A popular restaurant owner, accused of capital murder, fights for his freedom. I believe that God allowed me to come here. I am definitely an innocent man. My original belief is Satan. A self-avowed Satanist runs a variety of inmate hustles to fund a bodybuilder's appetite. Gained 44 pounds since I've been here. I don't think too much of it's fat. And a member of the Aryan Brotherhood dishes out his own brand of justice. I went in behind him and shut the door. I woke him up. I told him, like, hey, punk, get up. I got some bad news for you. San Antonio, Texas might be remembered for the Alamo. Today, it's one of the fastest growing cities in America. But increased growth also brings increased problems. For the longest period, uh, San Antonio was known as a large city with a small town mentality. But San Antonio is now the seventh largest city in the nation, and we're probably feeling the growing pains. And nowhere are those growing pains more apparent than just outside downtown in the solid brick fortress that is the Bear County Jail. It's where anyone charged with criminal acts in San Antonio or the outlying area will surely spend some time. My father always said that nobody comes to jail for being nice. But one thing we have to remember is that people that come to jail have not been found guilty yet. Most of the 3,500 men and women housed in Bear County have only been charged with crimes under awaiting trial or the resolution of their cases. Others have been convicted and are serving short sentences or are awaiting transfer to prison. Otto has been in and out of jails and prisons for the past 20 years. He's currently awaiting trial on charges of assault and vehicle theft, to which he has pled not guilty. Not a cakewalk, man. You see the knots on my head. I've been cut with razors all right here. I mean, I got cut with a knife. Man, this dude put six razors in a toothbrush. Try to stab me in the chest and my heart, you know. I mean, but it didn't work either, you know. I'm still here today. It's been rough. I've been in two fights since I've been in this jail in what, less than three months. One of those fights occurred after another inmate made fun of Alan's personal style. I'm the only one that's got this horseshoe mustache in there, and he's calling me Hulk Hogan, this and that. I was like, okay, 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 I got you. I said, after Trey, he's on, boy, I'm gonna smash on you. I knocked him out the first punch. Coaching CD. But I didn't stop me, and I knew I had to hold him down, you know, so I just kept beating on him, beating on him, beating on him. And then the search come in, you know, with a taser gun. Right, just time we'll be the jail's special emergency response team, or CERT, was called in to break up the fight. Afterwards, Alan was given 10 days in segregation, locked down 23 hours a day with no privileges. But it's something he's grown used to. Adam, look, Johnny. You do so many years in the pen, man, ain't nothing about it. Man, you, you get addicted to pain when you're in jail, you're in prison. You don't give a man. You're like, you focus on whatever. Alan's willingness to fight over his mustache is one of a seemingly endless supply of reasons inmates resort to violence. Go to CG, go to Charlie Go. Another fight has just broken out between three inmates in one of the general population housing units. 
The CERT team subdues the fighters and starts the investigation. Inmate, what's your name and sit number? Name and sit number. Lomas, 284486. The aggressors appear to be Guadalupe Lomas and Luis Hernandez. Neither man shows any sign of injury. Victor Sanchez, however, will require medical attention. Let's go. The fight should be facing the wall. Where's he at? Bring him over here. Sanchez's most obvious injuries are a black eye and a cut on the back of his head. Sergeant Tucker, who witnessed part of the fight, now takes over from CERT in finding out what happened and why. So where were you involved? Well, I do. I don't know. I just got hit. I got hit. Right, now, swinging. what I saw, I saw you swinging at him. You both had him cornered. You want to stand there and lie to me some more? No, sir. That's what happened. I got hit. Right. I just hit him, hit him back. You got a lockdown for nothing, then. Thomas. Sir. What'd you hit him with? My hand. Who had the thing that cut his back, back of his head open? Oh, I don't know about that, dude. Thank you? No, sir. Right. Okay. As Tucker interrogates Lomas and Hernandez, Sanchez undergoes his medical evaluation, where an entirely new injury is discovered. So you want to do the water ring? Sir, you the one to do the water ring? No. Who's with the water ring? I don't know about that. He was already like that. No. So who's in the water line? So with all due respect, a lot of those injuries he has, they're ready to be... Those before. are fresh. Who threw the water on him? Can I get a doctor to check him out? Okay, well, you, you got... You both are getting charged. So, serious bodily injury. Those burns and all that wasn't me. That wasn't me. Yeah. You already like that. The officers in the picture had already seen him for days like that. Yeah. While Hernandez and Lomas acknowledge fighting with Sanchez, they insist that some of the injuries were from another fight two days earlier. So Sergeant Tucker calls the officer who was on duty at the time, and the story seems to check out. Mm -hmm. It was a couple days ago. Yeah, not right now, bro. Guys in cell number nine. There was never a report done on it or anything. He's both the inmates in cell nine, uh, uh, CG, the ones who did that eye to his eye. Because officers did not witness the earlier fight, and Sanchez made no mention of it or discussed his injuries with staff, no disciplinary report was filed. But several inmates said that Sanchez was in fact in an earlier fight, lending credence to the claims of Lomas and Hernandez. Numbers 18, 14, 12. All three inmates will be locked in single-man segregation cells for a cooling-off period of at least 24 hours. Place your hands on the top bunk and stay there until you get the door closed. Though he and Hernandez were initially identified as the aggressors, Lomas, who is serving a one-year sentence for burglarizing a vehicle, says Sanchez started this latest fight. He came out, came to my cell, started talking <laughs> came back to his cell and wanted me to come inside. Uh -huh. You want me to come inside, all right? I take off my shirt, open the cell door, and he comes out swinging. When he starts swinging at me, that's when I did what I had to do. Well, he turned around and threw water on me, and we was tired of fighting. How hard? Yeah, I still got the burn. Sanchez is accused of car theft, to which he plans to plead not guilty. A lifelong stutter, he says the fight resulted from a dispute with Lomas when they knew each other on the streets. He was crying about five dollars. Uh, it was basically a stupid six 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 pack that that, that that he gave me, and and he was crying about the five dollars. Oh, that was. <laughs> <laughs> That's old news. I mean, maybe you needed that money that day for whatever reason may be. That's fine. But next time I see you, be mad enough at least to say, hey, you know what? I didn't mean it, bro, but here, I'll buy you a six-pack. You want 
You probably would in jail already. You can't, I, I can't buy you no damn beer in here. Hernandez maintains he has no idea what the other two were fighting about. But when he got too close to the action, he had no choice but to join in. You know the way it is in here, it's just a reaction, it's instinct. The other gentleman, how he got involved, I have no idea. I don't know if he got hit when we were fighting or what, and he started swinging back. But God is my witness. May he strike me dead, and I would deserve it if I threw hot water on that gentleman. No way. Coming up. You want to file charges? Should I? Victor Sanchez decides whether to raise the stakes and file criminal charges against his two attackers. And the business was very successful. Uh, everyone in the neighborhood knew me and they loved me. You cater my party and my house and everything. Staff members are shocked to see a popular figure in jailhouse scrubs. There are about 3,500 men and women housed in San Antonio's Bear County Jail. They share something in common with each other and the staff. Unlike prison, where inmates typically arrive from all over the state, jails cater to a single county or city. So it's not unusual for anyone here to come across a familiar face. But when Officer Moore first noticed Thomas Thames, he was more than a little surprised. At first, I saw the guy, and I was like, is that him? You know, you sort of get that little, is that him? No, it's not him. Is that him? No, it's not him. Three years earlier, Thames was making a name for himself in San Antonio due to the popularity of his barbecue restaurant and catering service. Being a connoisseur of the barbecue, you know what I'm saying, I thought I would kind of check it out. And the food was, was delicious. I mean, his brisket, his whatever you name it, he did it. His homemade sauce, he did it. Wall real quick, man. Officer Moore's brother, who is also a deputy at the jail, was a fan of Thames Barbecue as well. He came into my home, he met my kids, catered my party at my house and everything. Came over, you know, he barbecued and everything was wonderful, it was beautiful. Like I said, he was, he was a pillar of the community. The business was very successful. Uh, everyone in the neighborhood knew me and they loved me. And uh, I always show love to the neighborhood. I believe that God allowed me to come here. Uh, I am definitely an innocent man. And just sad to say, a tragedy happened and it cost me to lose everything. Thames is in jail on charges of capital murder and concealing a human corpse. Prosecutors say he was part of a drug deal gone bad. While Thames has pled not guilty, his co-defendant recently confessed to a double murder in the case and was sentenced to two consecutive life terms. Yeah, that person was a, a barbecue customer for six, seven years, someone you can trust. Thames would not elaborate on the details of his case, but he says he is confident he will be acquitted and that the three and a half years he has spent in jail trying to prove his innocence has served a purpose. This rock is the word of God, and we gotta start building our life on the word of God. Not what man says and what people say and what our friends say. We gotta build our life about on what God says, you know, because God's word is the truth. Amen. 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 God allowed me to provide this word in this prison. I have enough faith right now to know that God has, has everything ready for me. James chapter 4, verse 7. Thames leads Bible studies for the men in his housing unit and is regarded as a jailhouse pastor. But in another unit, Michael Lesher pledges allegiance to a different entity. You got uh, Lucifer and Satan. Through death I found life, and hell is my paradise. This is my paradise. Lesher says his belief in Satanism is illustrated by his numerous tattoos, all of which were accumulated during his various prison stays. I mean, it's better than some of the scratches I've seen on some inmates, but uh, it's really not all that extravagant. It's definitely not street quality work. Um, it was all single needle. I was 24 when I got the tattoo on my head. The horns itself, eh, that's just me being an outlaw, you know. Just somebody that's, I guess, a little bit of devil himself, you know what I mean? At the time that I got that tattoo, I had a real strict uh, 
belief in being anti-Christian. And uh, I believe that if there is a God looking down on me, he's got something looking right back up at him. My original belief is Satanism as in the original terms of the word. It just means a representation and acceptance of negative energy being there to let us know what positive energy is. You can't have one without the other, it's a balance. But in Lesher's case, his negative energy seems to have far eclipsed his positive. Me, I've been in prison my whole life. I mean, from the age of 14 to 19, I did five years on a state bid, 60 months, and then from 19 to 29, I did 10 years in the feds. You know, and now, I mean, I'm, my, my charges, I don't want to go into detail about my charge, but my charge is now two organized crime cases, three counts of burglary of habitat with force. Lasher has pled not guilty to his current charges and is awaiting trial. His repeat offender status could bring a lengthy sentence if he is convicted. And so I'm a violent criminal facing more violent charges. Three-time loser. Coming up, Michael Lesher and Thomas Thames both receive important news regarding their cases. I had a dream about God releasing me. And I don't care if they put me in lockdown or one, I'm gonna smash him. Todd Allen launches a vendetta. When new inmates arrive at San Antonio's Bear County Jail. What are you, what are you, what are you, why are you just hanging around with these guys? The only ones showing me love in here. Officials ask them about any known enemies they might already have here. They then place those inmates in separate housing units. But inmates rarely disclose every conflict they've had on the streets, such as the dispute over $5 and a six pack of beer that led to a recent fight between Victor Sanchez and two other inmates. Sanchez initially claimed that he sustained a black eye, burns to his chest, and a cut on the back of his head in a fight with Guadalupe Lomas and Luis Hernandez, both of whom admitted to the fight but denied the injuries. You the one that threw the water on him? No. Who threw the water on him? I don't know about that. He was already like that, no. After Sergeant Tucker investigated a rumor that Sanchez had fought with two other inmates days earlier, Sanchez admitted that the black eye came from that fight, as did the cut on the back of his head, which was reopened in the fight with Lomas and Hernandez. But he still insists they were the ones who burned him with hot water. Sanchez, you want to file charges? Should I? It's up to you. I will tell you that if you don't file charges, the county's going to file them anyway, because that's serious bodily injury. Yeah, I'll press charges. OK. And all four of them, or just two? One four. What are the, 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 the two from uh, two days ago? No. We really can't do anything about right now. The only thing we can work on right now is this case here. Yeah, I'll press charges. OK. That's all I need to know. That's what they get. I mean, they, they thought to me. I got a thought to so they, 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 they got to say what they could do, what could come to me now. As a member of the white supremacist Aryan Brotherhood gang, Todd Allen has seen his share of violence behind bars as well. We, we soldiers, you know what I'm saying? That's what we were brought here for. That's what we was trained for. You know, whatever we got to do, whatever we need to pull, grab a phone, grab whatever you can grab, you know, and start hitting somebody over the head with. But Allen's current conflict is not about race. It's about another inmate's charges. Well, I found out there was a job molester in there. I sexually assaulted a 13-year-old little girl, and he's, what, 38, 39 years old? Man, you don't do that, man. Those that uh, have charges against children, they tend to become prey. Some will try to make it out in population, but once they find out or if they feel that their, their lives are being threatened or anything like that, we have to segregate them. The laws can only protect a person for so long, man. There's ways to get to a person in any way, every way. You can get to him and kill a person right here in this jailhouse if you know what you're doing. Uh, believe it or not, we have individuals here in the facility who themselves do not like those type of crimes, and they will try to seek retribution, get revenge. And even though attacking the alleged sex offender in his housing unit could result in additional criminal charges, Allen says he's up for the job and intends to follow through. I don't care if they put me in lockdown or what, I'm gonna smash him. 
You don't do that to kids, man. That could have been my daughter. Could have been your daughter. Could have been his daughter. You know, you don't hold one down and force yourself on nobody, man. A kid is a kid. That's a gift from God. Thomas Thames has been banking on a different sort of gift from God. An acquittal. Known around San Antonio for his barbecue, Thames has been charged with murder and concealing a corpse in what has been called a drug deal gone bad. These are my sermons. Um, this is what I wrote a long time ago. Uh, love God and be careful what you wish for, I'm going home. Be careful what you pray for, I'm going home. Totally me, totally free. And I wrote that when I first got here because I knew I was innocent. And there's scriptures I pass out every day to inmates. So we have a total of 80 inmates that gets three scriptures a day, which are passed out every day, rain or shine. We call him Brother T, Thomas. Uh, every day he uh, takes it upon himself and he puts a little piece of paper and has three Bible verses. You know, this is nice that his spirit moves him to do that. You know, to take it upon himself to, you know, try and win another soul. Bless you. Thank you, brother. Bless you. Thames' popularity in his housing unit is not unlike what he enjoyed on the outside as the owner of a barbecue restaurant and catering service, a business that started out in a roadside tent. Had opportunity to get partnership with a, a gentleman, uh, and he we started uh, building the business together. And so God blessed me with this young man, and he, he bought a trailer. So not only one trailer, we had two trailers, and we had two uh, locations and that prospered also. And from those two locations, we started our restaurant. One of Thames' customers is now one of his jail keepers. Officer Moore hired Thames to cater parties at his home and took note of his business's growth. You know, I just kept asking, hey man, you know, how'd you get this money? How'd you do this? How'd you do that? He's like, hey, just got a rich benefactor who believes in me. Okay, cool, do your thing. Moore was startled to see Thames in jail as an inmate. That right there was basically made my heart drop. And I was kind of upset, like, what are you doing in here? I ain't more, this is what happened. And I told him, I said, straight up, I said, man, don't lie to me, man. What you doing in here? And that's what he told me. Thames told Moore he was innocent. When you know the truth, the truth will set you free. And when you know the truth, you don't have to answer any questions or ask God any questions. Coming up. This is the year of release, and this is when God is going to start uh, releasing his chosen ones, and I'm one of those that he's going to be releasing. Thomas Thames finds out if he will in fact be set free, and... Most people think they can't do pull-ups from it, but... <clears throat> Michael Lesher shares his jailhouse fitness tips. Due to mature subject matter, viewer discretion is advised. Most inmates at San Antonio's Bear County Jail find working out is one way to beat the monotony of incarceration. And Michael Lesher is no exception. The angle that these legs from, most people think they can't do pull-ups from it, but... <clears throat> While Lesher's unusual pull-up method is against jail rules, he says his sets are short enough that he can usually do them out of sight of roaming officers. But he knows he can't stay fit from exercise alone. After the workout, try your hardest to make everything that you put in your body, proteins, starches, things that are gonna be uh, stackers, you know, body stackers, that's how you grow. If you don't get enough food, you can only use what you put in your body. If you go work out harder than that, you're gonna burn off more than what you put in your body, so you're gonna get skinnier. You gain 40 pounds, 44 pounds since I've been here, I don't think too much of it's fat, you know what I mean? So, uh, you know, I got a six pack, I'm doing all right. Unlike most inmates, Lesher finds the meal served by the jail to be effective 
and fueling the rigorous workouts that help keep that six pack from turning into a keg. Remember, two slices of bread, Jason, two slices of bread. I understand all my carbohydrates, all the breakdowns of complete and non complete protein. I know if I'm gonna eat something before a workout, I can eat things like bread, sugars. Um, as long as when it breaks down into a glucose, I use it as energy before a workout. And Lesher has also figured out how to acquire food trays from other inmates. Most of them are willing to trade their jail-issued meals for snacks purchased from the commissary. And Lesher's more than willing to deal. I can get emotional about uh, food, say, oh man, I just want candy because I like candy. I like candy, I like cakes, I like cookies. I like all that stuff too, but it doesn't do nothing for me. So when I think logically, might as well trade all that to the kids that love that stuff for all their trays. And when at the end of the day, they're hungry, I'm sitting there working out because I got enough food in my body to do it. Lesher pays for the commissary snacks through another one of his talents. What are those? These are chips, poker chips. These are all poker chips. $2.50 chips, five cent chips, 10 cent chips. You know what I mean? But I mean, like I said, it's it's up to uh up to me to survive. My family does what they can, but they can't do too much. They're retired and they're living off of a uh, fixed income. I hustle. I mean, poker tends to be a good hustle for somebody that played it for 15 years. I, I feed off of it, I do what I gotta do. Lesher earns commissary through one other method as well. My art, I normally don't have a lot of it because it's already sold before I did it. For instance, I have a handkerchief that I'm gonna be working on. I make my own handkerchiefs out of brand new sheets. Uh, what I do is braid the edges, I braid them real nice, and then I'll put the portrait of the man's kid and his uh, wife on there. Charge $4 for the uh, handkerchief itself. I'll charge $5 for the design of the portrait, and then I'll charge another $5 to do the portrait on a handkerchief. Um, so, between 14 and $16, depending. Managing the dollars and cents of life behind bars is a skill Lesher has honed over his 15 years of incarceration. Todd Allen has also spent most of the past 20 years in and out of jail and prison. Now he's taken it upon himself to uphold another inmate tradition, one with a decidedly more sinister side. That's something we're big on. We don't allow snitches and we don't allow child molesters. When Allen discovered an accused child molester had moved onto his housing unit, he threatened to dish out his own form of justice. By the next time we saw him, he had apparently made good on it. He was in his cell. I went in behind him and shut the door. And uh, that way he couldn't run out of the cell on me. The door was automatically shut and locked. He was acting like he was asleep. I woke him up. I told him, like, hey, Paul, get up. I got some bad news for you. I said, you got three seconds to tell me the truth, boy. And finally, he looked at me, he said, yes, sir, that's what I'm here for. And I slapped the him about three times, knocked him off the top bunk. If I had a lot of time on my hands, say I had a life sentence in prison, is running concurrent or 20 years, I'd have killed a guy. But Allen achieved another goal. He got the inmate to request a transfer out of the housing unit. Uh, basically, the unit officer called me and B and said that he had an inmate that was in fear of his safety. So I went to the unit to interview the inmate, and at that time, we sent him down to medical to be evaluated by our medical staff, where he alleges that he fell off his bunk. Without the cooperation of the victim or witnesses, jail officials were unable to issue any punitive sanctions to Allen. I'm not going to just sit here and tell him, yeah, I did do it. I mean, I'll deny it to the fullest, but if they, if they find out any different, I, I'll tell you the consequences. I'll still feel happy in my heart about myself, you know. While Allen is proud to take credit for assaulting another inmate, jail officials have been sorting out who's responsible for the water burn suffered by Victor Sanchez in his fight with Guadalupe Lomas and Luis Hernandez. Sanchez blames Lomas and Hernandez. Lomas and Hernandez say the burns were from an earlier fight Sanchez had with two other inmates. You mean the one that threw the water on? No. Who threw the water on? I don't know about that. Mm. He was already like that. Man. Yeah. Why was the shirt dry? There was no water on the floor. Thomas. Sir. What'd you hit him with? My hand. Who had the thing that cut his back, back of his head open? Oh, I don't know about that, dude. Then he goes out and comes up to me and tells me, where's the weapon you used to bust his head open with? I said, what weapon, fool? I was hitting him with my hands. 
Maybe he bumped his head up on the door because he had already had a cut from where they stomped his ass already. I did what I had to do to defend myself, but I didn't use no weapon to cut him or anything like that. And I sure as hell didn't throw no water. Look, it's like this. I'm not a fool. I didn't get to be 48 by being an idiot. After a disciplinary hearing on the matter, the truth finally came out. Sanchez admitted all his injuries, including the burns, were caused in the earlier fight. Even the bloody wound on the back of his head was the reopening of a cut, also from the earlier fight. The criminal charges Sanchez was going to file against Lomas and Hernandez have been dropped. But sometimes in jail, the settling of one dispute is simply the calm before the next storm. Coming up. Hey, you talk like a duck, you walk like a duck. Don't get mad at me if I think you're a duck. Victor Sanchez undergoes interrogation. The only one person has inconsistent stories. That's, that's a liar. Two on the top tiers, apparently. And Guadalupe Lomas suffers a beating of his own. Inside the walls of San Antonio's Bear County Jail, Thomas Thames has spent the past three years trying to fit his six foot nine inch body onto a considerably shorter bed. The former basketball player and barbecue restaurant owner has also been fighting charges of murder and concealing a corpse in a case described as a drug deal gone bad. I had a dream about God releasing me and opening the gates of heaven, open the gates so I can be out. And that's the picture right there I have that's on the wall. This is Jubilee. This is the year of release, and this is when God is going to start uh, releasing his chosen ones, and I'm one of those that he's going to be releasing. And according to Thames, his statement is no longer one of faith, but of fact. I was called to court unexpectedly. I went to court, and paperwork's already ready. I didn't even know that I was getting my cases. I knew it was going to be dismissed, but I didn't know when. So when I went to court, paperwork was ready to be dismissed. And so it didn't even take me. It took me seconds or it took me five minutes to get my case dismissed but i had to spend three and a half years for what it only took five minutes to do i should be leaving any day um today tomorrow wednesday i'm just waiting on paperwork to be cleared up as soon as i get out my job is to preach the word and a few days later thames did in fact leave the jail but he did not go home while he did have the most serious of his charges, murder, dismissed, Thames had given us an inaccurate account of what actually happened in court. Unlawful carrying a gun and the capital murder cases were dismissed. Uh, and in court, they found him guilty, though, of the disposing of a human corpse, uh, where he was sentenced to 10 years TDC. Why would he have thought he's going to go straight from jail home? Now, that part would be a misinterpretation in his part. Uh, he was actually there in court with his attorney in front of the judge, in front of the prosecutor, as far as what he pled out to. So uh, whether he didn't understand or if he knew and maybe really misrepresenting the truth to you, I don't, I don't know. But he's, he's there in front of the judge and in front of everybody pleading out to a uh, TDC sentence. When we went to follow up with things, he had already been transferred to a Texas state prison to begin serving his sentence. With the time he's already spent in jail taken into account, Thames will be eligible for parole in little more than a year. One of his former customers hopes that his incarceration will serve as an important lesson. A lot of people looked up to him in the community. You know, I want him to get back on track and let them know that, you know what, these chances, you know, are given to you for a reason. You know, you can't mess it up. If you mess it up, you know where you're going to go. And now, one of the jail's gang intelligence officers suspects another inmate is not being truthful about a particular aspect of his life. The inmate is Victor Sanchez. Officer Rodriguez has received a report that he is an operative for the Mexican Mafia. Well, uh, your name came up in a report, Victor. You don't know the report I'm talking about? Roughly 20 days ago? Fear for safety? No, somebody else was in fear of you. You know anything about that? Okay. The report says that this guy's in fear, saying that you and a bunch of other inmates are basically strong arming him and other inmates within the unit, and that you're ex Mexican mafia. Now, the problem with this report is you also have a history of being identified as a gang member in the past. But I'm not a Mexican. I understand that, but why would this inmate say that about you? The thing is, is that there's 44 inmates in that unit 
He has 44 people to pick. He identifies you. Why would he do that? I don't even know who he is. I don't it doesn't know. matter who he is. The point is that he identified you. I'm not doing nothing. I, I'm not doing Obviously, nothing. something's happening in there if he's identifying you. We want to go ahead and try to weed out the major prison gangs from general population because these particular gangs are predatory gangs and they prey upon the weaker inmates in the facility. We want to get them out of population so we can go ahead and make the jail as a whole a safer place for both inmates and staff. So you understand what I'm telling you, right? I'm going to lockdown or something? You probably will today. Why? I mean, if I didn't do Your history of being identified as a gang member in this recent report, my job is to figure out where I'm going to house you at. That's what we're talking about. But I'm not doing nothing. Why, 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 why should I go locked down if I'm not doing nothing? You, 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 you can look at my reports. I'm, I'm, I am looking at your reports. I'm, I'm not getting, getting in trouble. I'm not getting write-ups. But we just talked about a report you were involved in where an inmate identified you. Why should I go locked down if I'm not doing it? So why would you think this guy would identify you as a member of the Mexican Mafia if you're not doing anything? Who is he? Who, I mean, it doesn't matter who he is. Why would he say that about you? To, to put me locked down? To, to, to exactly what you're trying to do. Why would anybody do that to you? You owe money in there? What's going on? Why does somebody want to get rid of you? I don't know. I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't have, I have no, no, no. No, no, no response to that because I, I don't know. I'm, I'm not Mexican Mafia. I'm nothing. Man. You can just look at me, man. Officer Rodriguez then changes course to ask Sanchez about the fight he was involved in with Guadalupe Lomas. You got in a fight with two guys, didn't you? Or one guy? Yeah. What was that about? The money. You talking about drugs here? What are we talking about? No, it's just money, money that you owe me. How much do you owe you? You owe me $50. $50? For what? For fixing the car. Yeah. So when they did the investigation, you told them it was over beer. It was beer, too. Well, and which that, one was it? It was beer, and it was, it was over the car. That's all I told them about beer. But I'm not doing nothing wrong. The only one person has inconsistent stories. That, that's a liar. Flat out. I mean, we're both grown men here, right? There's no point in beating around the bush here. You've been lying in the past. Why on earth would I believe anything you tell me at this point? But I'm not a Mexican mother. That is. So here's what I'm seeing. You're identified as a member of the mafia and population. You know, you talk like a duck, you walk like a duck. Don't get mad at me if I think you're a duck, you know what I mean? Still, without concrete proof of Sanchez's gang affiliation, Officer Rodriguez has no choice but to return him to general population. We may need to go ahead and keep a close eye on him in population to see who he's talking to and to see uh, exactly what his exact ties were outside of the facility. And as a result, if we can do that, if we do our job right, we might be able to identify not just him, but maybe more inmates that are uh, aligned with this gang and get a chunk of them out of the population. While staff will watch Sanchez for any ties to the Mexican mafia, his former nemesis, Guadalupe Lomas, might have just had his own run-in with the gang. Two on the top tiers, Karen. Lomas is currently serving display attention. Um, a couple days ago, he was involved in assault. Inmates were out on their day room hour and took it upon themselves to assault inmate Lomas. There you go. Put your hands behind your back. The inmates who assaulted Lomas would not appear on camera, but were sent to disciplinary detention and could possibly face criminal charges. No one knows the reason why they assaulted him. It's allegations as to why they did it, but no one knows for sure why he got assaulted. What are the allegations? Mexican Mafia. Supposedly, the young guys probably trying to make a name for themselves and took it upon themselves to assault Lomas. Lomas, despite his injuries, would not give authorities any information about why he was assaulted. So for now, he will be treated for his wounds and transferred to another segregation unit, away from his assailants. Coming up. Words of a warrior. Jail brings hard truths for Michael Lesher. Another person just balled up and thrown away like a piece of trash. And... I'm a hardcore dude, man. You'll never see me cry, man, but when it comes to that, bro, it's just hard, man. Todd Allen receives disturbing news from both the courts and home. With the words of a warrior, hold close. The words of a warrior, trust most. 
the words of a warrior. My family, my friends, my home were gone. Everything I know to prove to be wrong. And it is so true when they sing that song. Everything that you do comes back tenfold. A product of a bad life in a bad land. Can only make one thing that's a bad man. What I had become, people could not understand. A demented little cracker with a messed up plan. I wanted to be the first white rapper, you know what I mean? And, uh, but it never happened. Life of prison happened. Either way it goes, there's a lot of prisons now. You gotta expect if you slip, you prison bound. Attached at the wrist with them chrome bracelets. Surrounded by officers talking that <laughs> It's a risk that we take and a price that we pay that you need to realize that will never go away. Cause there's always gonna be somebody standing in your way. Walking with the undertaker ready to take your place. Michael Lesher has spent half his life behind bars. It is now facing three counts of burglary of a habitation with force and two organized crime charges. The words of a warrior, words of a warrior. He has just turned down a plea deal for 25 years in order to go to trial. If found guilty, he could get life in prison. The words of a warrior, I trust most. If he's set free, he'll have a different set of challenges. I don't know what to do in the free world, and nobody's willing to tell me this is how you gotta do it. I don't know how to pay light bills. I don't know how to pay a rent. I don't know how to do a W-2 form. Nobody went out their way to teach me. So it is what it is. Another person just balled up and thrown away like a piece of trash. Another life ended before it ever started. While Lesher awaits his fate in Bear County, he's made friends with another inmate who could also be looking at a long sentence if he's found guilty, Todd Allen. Allen was recently transferred to Lesher's housing unit. A short time later, he took part in the jail's underground tattoo trade and got some new ink to honor his gang. Yeah, I decided to go ahead, man, do a little different look, you know? This one right here is AB2. It's some gang-related, you know what I'm saying? Five-star crime represents us, the Baron Brotherhood. For the three-leaf clover, you know, it's a shamrock clover. And the lightning bolts, it goes with it too, man. So, this shit represents, man. Allen also received something new from the district attorney. A plea deal offer on his charges of assault and vehicle theft. Because of his past record, Allen could face significant time in prison if he were found guilty in trial. They offered me 10 years on both charges. I'm like, hell no, man. You get it down to five or less, I'll sign, man. Though Allen is holding out for a better deal, he is anxious to leave the jail because of yet another piece of news. He just got word that his mother is gravely ill and fears he will never see her again because she lives far from San Antonio. She's got lung cancer real bad. You know, she's in and out of the hospital, pneumonia. She's on oxygen, breathing machines. Uh, man, you know, even though I guess... People think I'm cold-hearted, looking at my tats, and I mean, in a way, I am. But I want to be able to see my mom, you know, before she does pass on, you know? If Alan quickly accepts a plea deal, he could request a prison closer to his mother's home and possibly see her again. Since I've been in the hospital so much lately, it scares me. I was in there 14 days of February with pneumonia. I almost died, so, uh, you know... Just ask God for getting us, he'll help you. And, and one of the other letters she wrote in there, you know, she said, I'll never forget you, y'all would be my baby boy, you know what I'm saying? If he doesn't accept a deal, he might have to be acquitted to see her. And even he feels that's a long shot. She's a real good woman, man. She, uh, I said, go through hard times and bad times, take beatings. I'm a hardcore dude, man. You'll never see me cry, man, but when it comes to that, bro, it's, it's just hard, man. And knowing you being in here, you know, I said, I said, man, just to see her one more time, and I'd take five years. I might even take the 10 pieces. I don't know. I feel like when I lose my mom, it's over. She's special to me, man. She really is. <laughs>